The set of priorities we live by determines our destiny. Words have got the power to change and transform people. When we understand something differently, a ripple effect happens in our energy. Good morning, everybody. I love a standing ovation before I even start. Um, you don't mind standing for the whole presentation, right? That's not a challenge? Okay, well, let's, let's take a seat maybe. So thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate your welcome. Uh, I want to ask a couple of questions. How many of you are using some form of social media, whether it be YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, for at least five hours a week? For at least five hours a week. Okay, perfect. And how many of you using those social networks are making between five to 10,000 US dollars from your business from those hours? Okay, would you like to know how? Okay, great, we're in the right place. I wanna go through specifically three things um, that if I was starting again right now, 10 years after I did start, what I would do, what I would do differently as an entrepreneur and what I would do um, to make the, the, use, the best use of social media, but also the best use of my time. The first one is something every single one of you can do starting today and it's understanding the power of habit. And I came across this at an event I was speaking at uh, maybe two years ago, and Robin Sharma, do you know Robin Sharma? He was speaking before me, and I was listening to what he was talking about. He was talking about habit. And he said, well, actually, a university in London in 2009 proved that it takes a minimum of 66, 67 days to create a habit. Now, I remember thinking, mm, I could go around now and tell people this, and I'd be very smart or I'm going to actually implement this and test it. So I decided, how was I going to test this out that it takes 66, 67 days to create a habit? So I looked at my life and what area needed something that required more routine, and it was fitness and health. So I decided, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just going to run every day. And I'm not going to set myself a target like of half an hour or 45 minutes. I'm just going to say a minimum of 15 minutes. So no matter where I am on the planet, I know I can make 15 minutes happen. And what I did was this. Every day on my diary, I wrote down jog day number one, jog day number two, jog day number three, jog day number four. But if I missed a day, start again. So then I got really excited. Day 66 was coming. I was like, what's going to happen? What is going to happen today? I wake up. How do I know I've created a habit? Nothing changed. The 70, I went back and I read the notes, and Robin Jarma said, at least 67 days. I go, oh, okay, so what does that mean for me? So I went through the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and one day in the 90s, I was up early going for a run. And I came back, showered, sat down, was preparing for the day, and something strange happened. I had the endorphin effect from exercise, but I had no sense of accomplishment. So I was like, this is strange. Then the next day, exact same thing. The next day, the exact same thing. It took a while for the penny to drop. You know you've created a habit when you stop giving yourself a pat on the back for doing it. Does that make sense? Why would, you, why would you say, well done? Because you were going to do it anyway. Does that make sense? So what I suggest you do is this. From today, you start creating a new habit of online business, or specifically online marketing of what you do right now, and just a minimum of 10 minutes. Everybody would love to spend an hour on it every day, but that's not realistic. Just spend 10 minutes because you know you can get away from everybody for at least 10 minutes in the day. And if you're literally in the bathroom and you're just logging in to your autoresponder or to your ClickFunnels account or to your Facebook ads, you're 10 minutes closer to your goal. Does that make sense, right? So that is, that's probably the most important thing I can impart on you that you can take today that will make a massive difference full time, but just do one habit at a time. Second thing I would do, often I believe that the online business world is Sometimes it's oversimplified, so that when people actually start, they go, hang on a second, there's more to this than I thought, and usually it's like just, you know, it's two steps or three steps, but I found that there's actually seven steps involved in becoming successful with a business, and especially when you plug social media into it. And uh, in the book, Rethink Social Media, I walk through these seven steps, and I, I want to go through each of these seven in turn so that you can figure out where your gaps are currently in your business. Now, on the left-hand side, you might notice, because I'm pointing it out, that the R and the E are independent. They stand alone. And the think is a cyclical, cyclical unit. It drives itself forward, self-propelling. Right niche, keep it simple. Make sure it's in one of these. I don't care where you land on the planet, these three problems 
are worldwide. Health, wealth, happiness. And if you stick to one of these, you are going to make your life so much easier. Why? Now, many of you have different businesses right now where you might think they don't fit in these. Let's say, for example, you own um, a security company. You sell alarm systems. And your entire business is around telling people they should buy your alarm systems. So what does a security business, right? You're helping maintain the family's wealth. You're helping them feel safer and happier. Does that make sense? So connect to that, the emotion, not the product. Evaluate who the right person is. That's all about creating this imaginary person, your avatar, and, and just getting into the details like, of all the people you know in day-to-day -day life, who is most so suited to your business? What age are they? Where do they live? What country? Male or female? What, what address specifically? Where exactly would they live? Um, how many children do they have? What age are their children? These are the kind of things that people don't think about, but they're critical when it comes to targeting traffic on social media. You've got to know who you're looking for, or you've got to know what fish you want to catch, before you decide what bait you're going to use and whether you're going to go saltwater fishing or freshwater fishing. Have their kids just left? Have they got some spare money left over? And what's their biggest pain right now? What is it that they need an immediate solution for? Because as a teenager or someone in your 20s or your 30s or your 40s or 50s or 60s, your biggest pain changes. Now, traffic. Let's just show you some examples of why social media rocks. We go to Google usually finding with, with problems and looking for solutions. <clears throat> Instead, I would like to show you a magical website called Twitter, where if you type in a problem, you don't just get websites trying to sell you stuff. You get real people with those actual problems. So if I typed in, I want to lose weight, look what happens. You've got Carla saying, straight and to the point, I want to lose weight. Caitlin, I only want two things, to lose weight and to eat. This says 30 minutes ago. This is like in the last half an hour when I took this, right? And that's the exact reason why social media for the masses is not what I'm talking about. Do you think if somebody is willing to share the fact that they need to lose weight with 350 million strangers, that they just might be ready to do something about it? Absolutely. You can type in any problem here, by the way, right, and find out in real time, do people have this problem? Are they asking for help? Because if they don't, you're probably making business harder than it needs to be. Now, my question, if I was you, would be, but Paul, Twitter's been around for ages. Surely I've, I'm late to the party. You couldn't be more wrong. There is, is not a better time to start than now, and I'll tell you why. Because of one word, leverage. Tony, our friend, who we talked about earlier, he's got three million followers. But if you use their advertising function, you can go into the function there that says add followers. You know what that means? This is so good, it should be illegal. You could type in the name of any Twitter account, your perfect competitor, let's say who has your perfect people in their following, and you can put your message in front of their followers. And in case three million wasn't good enough, they will say, oh, by the way, um, we've got 45.9 million look-alike audiences. So these are people similar to Tony's followers. Might that be interesting to you in any way? Yes, one person. What about the rest of you? <laughs> Give me a yes. There we go. How many of you just want to target clients that have lots of money? You can target people based on the type of home that they have. Do they have a mortgage? Do they rent or do they own it? 23.6 million. You can target people based on their credit history, their credit worthiness. Excellent, 11.6 million. When you run out of them, very good, 6.2 million. You can target people based on their net worth and it gets better. You can target people by the pet that they have in their house. Next, help for free. You will have seen things like these before. Advertisements on social media but you should not be selling anything. You should help for free, give something for free. My personal favorite, webinars. So Jad is gonna be talking about that either today or tomorrow, by far my favorite. Because not only are you giving them free education, you also have the opportunity to focus on the emotional pain and why this is an urgency. This is what we do every single day, right? Every single day, whether I'm speaking on stage or whether I'm on a plane, at the moment, we're doing 221% ROI on our ads every week. My accountant, one of my accountants, Ralph, says, Paul, you don't teach business, you teach magic. He said, you set this up with this next step, immediate upsell, that you are in profit before you even acquire a client. I said, I know. He said, but that's not what traditional business is. And I said, why would anybody want to learn traditional business? You have a 96% chance of failure. Surely you want to learn how to have a 99% plus chance of success. Does that make sense? So what we do with an upsell is basically our goal is our ads 
that webinar that we run, which is evergreen, which is running constantly, we cover the cost of our, ad of our advertisements with that webinar. So we give something away for free, which is the free training. Then they're offered an upsell to come on to this online training, which they can purchase for $1,000. That those sales right at point of getting a person's email address. So we're not selling to them, right? We've given them something for free. Now they have the option to buy immediately because people aren't stupid. People know that you're moving them slowly into that, that moment when you offer them something, but there's about 10 to 20% of all audiences, of all people that say, can I just buy it now? I don't need to go through the process. Does that make sense? And those people will cover the cost of your ads. So do not be afraid of immediately upselling to somebody once they've shown a commitment that they want to know more. And nurturing the relationship with your list. I look at it in this way, and this is covered in the book, Rethink Social Media. You're taking people from cold traffic to leads to prospects to clients and to addicts. And I know addict has a bad reputation out in the general public, but in business, addict is what you want to create. People who won't go anywhere else except you because you've got the best service, the best support, and ultimately, you care more. It's amazing that you can stand out among all your peers by just doing two things. Number one, having integrity, and number two, caring more than others. Right? The rest will come naturally. The rest is pressing buttons. Right? So even if you think, I'm not technical, I don't know if I can do this, just remember this. The difference between you and somebody making millions on the internet today is the sequence of the keys you press on your keyboard. That's the difference. You all know how to press keys and spend money. That also means you know how to press keys and make money. It's just the same transaction, you're just on the other side. So K then is knowing your numbers. This is really, really getting anal about the specifics of your business and knowing your numbers. Understand your cost per lead, your cost per customer, your, your lifetime value per customer. And this is step number three that I would take if I was you starting again. For me, uniqueness means specialty, which means you are putting yourself out of business sooner than later. Make it about you. Instead of USP, think about ISP. ISP, what does ISP stand for? ISP stands for Income Stream Panel. For me, financial security with your business is not around uniqueness, it's about multiple streams of independent income. Does that make sense? Right, adding separate independent income streams to your business, that's how you guarantee that you're going to survive, that you've got longevity in your business. And it's a very simple thing here. This is an Excel file where basically you identify individual streams of income in your business. Once you identify them, they immediately go red. So for example, let's say I'm promote, I have a webinar and I've created it, okay? So I write down stream number one, my webinar for my $1,000 product, status red. The, it goes amber the moment I put that video live on YouTube and it's there on YouTube forever because now I have a chance of making money 24-7. Does that make sense? So the question I'll ask you to ask yourselves at night is this, and it really focuses you when you're sitting down to work on your business. What did I do today that allows me to make money tonight? That completely shifts your focus from having to be awake in order to make money, having to just make ends meet and get by. We need to set up assets that pay us over and over again. And if you put this together, a very basic income stream panel, you identify them all, they all go red, your first step is turn your reds amber. Do something actively that allows you to make money passively. When you make at least one sale a week, you turn it green. If you just put a video online describing what your business is and a clear call to action, and it was a 10 minute video, and you put that online on YouTube, you have now a chance of making money 24 seven. If you're smart, and you want to double that, you put it on Vimeo as well as YouTube. Now you've doubled your chances. If you're really smart, you'll divide that video into 10 videos, so now you've got 10 one minute videos telling people how to come and buy whatever you have, and you put that on Vimeo, now you've 22 ways of making money from 10 minutes work. Do you see how that cannot help but make you more successful financially, yes? Right? And that you just be smart about it. You're just aligning uh, what you do to make sure you're building assets and not focusing on short-term successes. So there are the three things I would talk about. Understand the power of habit. Use the Rethink social media model. Start focusing on ISP. How can I set up independent ways of making money whether I'm awake or asleep? Do you want to know the secret of how to make money while you sleep, anybody? Yes? yes? The secret to making money while you sleep 
is doing something while you're awake. <laughs> Just so you know, I'm going to let you in. It's a very, very secret of that, but that's the, that's the key. Do something while you're awake. I'm going to add in a fourth bonus. If you want to take this to a whole new level, start planning to leave a legacy. Think bigger. Stop thinking about your house, your job, your kids, your family. Start thinking about the next generation. Start thinking about your village, your town, your city, your country, your continent, and figure out how can what you do on a daily basis impact on people's lives and inspire them to do something on this planet that is useful, that's extraordinary, and that will allow them in turn to be inspired by you. Thank you so much for listening to me. I hope you found this in some way valuable, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much.